Hello and welcome to The Buzz. I have one more week of exploring eastern Nebraska looking for water towers. I saw some good ones this last week when I was heading down to Fall City to watch Humphrey St. Francis take on Fall City Sacred Heart in a Class D2 semifinal. Humphrey St. Francis returns to the state championship game for the first time since 2009 and they pretty much put it to Fall City Sacred Heart. I don't think a whole lot of people were expecting this but St. Francis pounded the ball throughout the game. They threw the ball just four times, completing one of those four passes. And sophomore J.J. Oltmer, Humphrey St. Francis has the type of durability in a running back that can take him a long way in a state championship game. They also have a nice compliment to him with senior Chad Heyer. Heyer ran for over 80 yards in the win, while Oltmer was up at 150 in the win. The thing about St. Francis, though, that sets them apart and has them in the Class D2 state championship game this year is their defense, and they are going to need it in this championship game on Monday at 10.15 a.m. at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln against Giltner. That's because Giltner has one of the most prolific offenses the state's ever seen. The Hornets have twice hit the 90-point mark in the playoffs, and they're averaging well over 60 points a game. Now, St. Francis isn't the only eight-man team from the area that's going to be playing for a state championship next week, as Elgin Public Pope John whooped Arapahoe. They wrapped Arapahoe <laughs> to qualify for the Class D1 state championship. The thing about the Wolfpack is their experience. They've been there before. They're the defending Class D1 state champion, and I don't think at the beginning of the season people thought they'd be in a position to repeat this year. But thanks to quarterback Ross Schindler, uh, running back Blake Anderson, you have a lineman and Andrew Heidoff, all state caliber players, they've taken the Wolfpack back to that level, and now they're going to have a chance to win another state championship as they face Exeter Milligan at 245 on Monday afternoon at Memorial Stadium. In the 11-man game, Lutheran High Northeast came oh so close, so close. Uh, you have to feel for the kids for putting in so much effort and being so close. I've always wondered myself, being on the, the uh, losing end of several lopsided games, if it's harder to lose close games or harder to lose those lopsided games. And I got to imagine when, when you know you were so close, that makes it even more difficult. But I think, you know, they get down the line a year from now, two years from now, they're going to look back at their performance. They're going to look back at their effort. They're going to look back at the fact that they're the first 11-win team in school history, the first state semifinalist in school history, the first district champion in school history. They're going to look back at the season and say, man, we had a good one. David City Aquinas just had a good team as well. In Class C1, we're going to have a rematch in the state championship game as Norfolk Catholic will play Albion Boone Central Newman Grove. In the regular season early on, Catholic had a 35-31 win over the Cardinals. It was a come-from-behind victory, and Boone Central knows they can play with the two-time defending state champion Knights. Because of that, and because of the fact that they have Tanner Missouri quarterback in the biggest, strongest, most strongest, most offensive line in the state of Nebraska in Class C1, that's kind of what helped power them to a 21-14 win over Adam Central in the semifinals, Adam Central's first loss of the year. Norfolk Catholic, on the other hand, they were playing for so many things in their, uh, their semifinal win over Pierce. They, the win gave Coach Jeff Beller his 300th career win, becoming just the fifth coach in state history to get to that mark, and he did it in fewer games than anyone else. The win also kept them in line to become the first ever three-time Class C1 state champion. It put them in the Class C1 state finals for the fourth year in a row. No Class C1 team has ever done that. It avenged the 20-19 loss to Pierce during the regular season that snapped Norfolk Catholic's 32 game winning streak and it was an emotional lift following a, a week uh, that Jeff Beller told me he hasn't experienced anything like it during his career with the injury to Isaac Pfeiffer and everything that surrounded that. He wasn't exactly sure how much the Knights would have in the tank in, for this game, especially mentally. There was a lot on, and we tried not to talk about anything. You know, I'm gonna hang around a while, so I was gonna get 300 at some time anyway. So, uh, you know, but but uh, I, my fear was too that maybe we'd mentally break down a little bit and not be as sharp, and I didn't want to have to get after anybody too hard because they've already been through a lot, and we got after a couple guys because that's I guess just how I coach. But yet, uh, there was a lot on the plate, but they they stepped up and played well. But they definitely showed up in Tuesday's win, and, and they showed up to start with defensively. They held Pierce to just 46 total offensive yards in the first half. They built a 20 to nothing lead, and they did a lot of it with Jordan Beller's arm. He completed 8 of 14 passes, 148 yards, 3 touchdowns, did it with his leg too. He had 4 punts in the game, averaging 49 yards per punt, and 3 of those punts all coming in the, in the second half pinned Pierce inside its own 20-yard line. Uh, Norfolk Catholic and Boone Central also two of those traditional programs in the class in Class C1 in the state of Nebraska. I'm sure the players are looking forward to it. The fans are looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm also looking forward to getting a nice Thanksgiving break, 
but I'm not going to worry about that until next week. And I will talk to you one last time next week, recapping what happened in our state championship games on the buzz. Until then, make sure you pick up the paper and check out NorfolkDailyNews.com.